Well, good morning. It's good to be in worship with you today. Uh, what a joy it is to celebrate uh, together, to worship God. Uh, for those of you have, who have been traveling, welcome back. Uh, this is a good day to be together in worship. My name is Mike Luzinski. I'm the lead pastor here at Spring of Life. And I want to extend a special welcome to all of our guests who might be worshiping with us online or here in person. It's a joy to worship with you, and we'd love the opportunity to talk with you further. So please take a moment to fill out a Connect card so that I or someone else who is a part of our community can follow up, have a conversation with you, uh, and reach out further. You can do that if you're watching online through our digital Connect card on the church website uh, or or commenting in on the live stream, or if you're here in person, uh, the row in front of you or the table you're sitting at has these cards as well. A few quick announcements. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun each Thursday night at 6.30 uh, sharing different movies. Uh, we've been doing this as a part of our Gospel in Disguise series. We had a good time this past Thursday watching Willy Wonka, and this upcoming Thursday, we will watch together the movie we're, we're viewing today, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. That'll be a lot of fun. That's Thursday at 6.30. I invite you to pray for Mission Camp and Splash Camp. Uh, Mission Camp uh, Youth Age 6 through 12 is coming up this week, and this is the final week of Splash Camp, our preschool summer programming. Please pray for those, and continue praying for the hiring process. As a uh, that the wheels of that are moving along as we are looking to find a new worship director, family ministry director, and financial secretary. Uh, we hope to have an announcement on one of those positions, or we believe we will, uh, next Sunday. So that's exciting that we are making progress uh, as we work on that. So please pray for our staff parish team, which is the volunteer church human relations team, uh, and they are they are vital to that ongoing work. So now I invite you to join me in the process of lighting a candle. We do this each week because it is a tangible sign and reminder that when we worship together, we're stepping into the presence of God. Think about all those different passages in the Bible where God is mentioned as a flame or a fire. Moses at the burning bush here we are this morning, stepping into the presence of God, represented by this flame. Would you stand and join me in our call to worship? You can find the words uh, on the screen. Jesus has proved his love for us. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ sets us on a new path of sanctifying grace. Amen. Last week we finished with this song as we celebrate the grace that we've received from God, who makes us his sons and daughters, who provides us a great inheritance. Let's sing. We've gone from beggars to royalty. Upon that cross, 
Then he rose up from the grave. My God, still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running we are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Let's sing it out. Here we go. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. first, the Word present to God, God present to the Word, the Word was God in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through Him. Nothing, not one thing, came into being without Him. What came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness the darkness couldn't put it out. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ our King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. didn't want heaven without us so jesus you brought heaven down your sin was great your love was greater what could separate us now what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is What a wonderful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of
Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. He silenced the bones of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of
you as the one who came and made a way to know us, the one who came to be in relationship with us, the one who loves us more than we can imagine, and the one who is always at work in our lives and in our world. We pray this morning that you would meet us each in the place where we need you the most, that you would take all the circumstances that we brought in with us and that you would meet us in a special way. You know all that's going on in each of our lives. And so we offer ourselves to you now and ask that you would continue to take our failures and take those broken places, take our hurt and our shame and make something new and beautiful out of it and help us to be your vessels to the world. We offer ourselves to you now, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Living God, your spirit pours love into our hearts, grace into our lives, and healing into our world. Speak to us now as we read the good news of your love. Amen. A reading from Romans chapter 5. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely, therefore, since we have now been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through Him, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Are you awake yet? <laughs> it's good to be with you today. And I want to ask a question to all the kids with us uh, as we begin. I want all of you kids to raise your hand if you've had your mom or dad or someone else in your family tell them or tell you they love you. Raise your hand if you've had someone tell you they love you. Yep. Okay. That's good. That's good. Most everybody. All right. Let's flip the question. Parents, uh, have you told your child, or, or maybe if you're not a parent, uh, a child in your family or a child you're close with that you love them? I'd love to see a show of hands. Okay, that's almost everyone. That's good. That's good. Um, but it, it kind of begs the question, uh, what do we mean when we say, I love you? I can use that word love in a sentence in a lot of different ways. I can say, I love my wife. I love my brother. I can also say, I love pizza. And I bet if we did a show of hands about who loves pizza, we'd also have a lot of hands raised in this room. What about Luna? What about Luna? I love my dog. Yes. You know, those are very different forms of love. And the English language uh, 
doesn't do us any favors because we use that same word for all of those things we just described. Pizza, a dog, my wife, my brother, a parent. But Greek, the language that the Bible is parts of the Bible are written in, well, they have a number of different words for love that help us understand even more fully what love is meant and what this love means in the passage we just read. So some of those forms of love are uh, an eros love, which is kind of like a romantic type of love, or a, uh, a philia type of love. Like if you think of the city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, it's connected to that Greek word, uh, a familial love. Uh, but the, the word that I want to focus in on today, and some of you probably already know it, is agape. Raise your hand if you've heard of agape love before. Okay, a lot of folks. This is a love that is a little bit harder to define or nail down. I think of it in its most pure form as a love with no strings attached. A love that is moving out, expecting nothing in return. Similar to a love a parent has for a child if you ask a mom or a dad, they would say, I'll do anything for my child. That is a form of this agape love. And the term uh, agape often focuses more on the person giving the love. You know, they, they, they kind of, it helps us think of love as a gift that we give, a gift that we share freely with people. So we're going to do this uh, and, and explore this idea that leads us to Jesus. Jesus is the epitome of agape love. I know, you already knew that before you stepped in here today. Uh, but the good news of the gospel, the thing we're focusing on this morning, is that the sacrifice of Christ, Jesus Christ, leads us on a new journey. That the agape love of Christ opens up a new future, a new journey for all of us. And we're going to explore this through our sermon series, The Gospel in Disguise. So kids, I need your help again. Do you remember the, the movie and the scripture passage we read uh, two weeks ago? I heard someone say it. Yeah. Finding Nemo. And, and when we looked at Finding Nemo, we paralleled the story of the prodigal son. And how Marlon, that Nemo's dad, was going and running after his son. Then last week, what movie did we watch? Do you remember? Willy Wonka. Yes. And then when we, when we talked about Willy Wonka, we remembered that God makes us a part of God's family. We are heirs, just like Charlie became the heir to the whole chocolate factory, we become the heirs of Christ. And this week, we're going to watch a clip from the very first Harry Potter movie, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Uh, I know I grew up in a community, uh, a faith community that was against Harry Potter, uh, and I, I just want to say at the outset of this, I'm in no way endorsing wizards or witchcraft, but I also think that Harry Potter is one of the most well-known book and movie characters in the entire world. And what I want us to do, which we've been doing as a part of this series, is recognize the gospel themes in the movies and books that we already know and love. And the gospel is right here in this story in a powerful way. I will, I will preface this clip to say this is towards the end of the movie when Harry, Ron, and Hermione are on a quest to stop the bad people, bad guys in this situation, from getting the Sorcerer's Stone. And they do that through a game of wizard's chess. Now, wizard's chess is a lot like real chess, except when a piece is taken, the piece <laughs> will smash the other one. And so I will say, for some of our youngest worshipers, this might be a little scary, and the music uh, makes it scary. So I just want to 
preface that. Um, but there's a gospel theme in this passage, and it has a lot to do with agape love. As we watch it, be thinking about that. So, there's a lot going on in there, and I'm going to do the same thing I did to you last week, and we're going to talk about it at the end uh, and tie it, uh, tie it all together a little bit. But for now, I want us to focus our attention on Romans 5, verse 8. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is Paul's writing about this agape love. Most of us would love someone who loved us back. It's pretty easy to love someone who loves you back. But in this case, God loves without knowing or without even an expectation that you would love God back. It's a risky love, a proactive love that is reaching out. It's like the love of a parent, even when their child may not love them back in the way that they want. God makes that choice, that commitment to love in that way before you and I were ever born. Before we said yes to relationship with God, God was loving us. And 
Christ shows that love, to summarize it in a sentence, through the story of Christmas and Easter. That is the embodiment of God's love for us. God's love made tangible, leaving heaven, coming to earth, becoming completely human, so that we can relate and know God on a person-to-person -person level. And then not only that, becoming human, but going a step further and laying himself down to take upon him all the sin, the shame, the suffering of the world so that through the cross and ultimately the empty tomb, we would join Christ in being victorious over sin and death. And we share in that freedom, that new life, that resurrection hope. That is how Christ shows love for us. And that's how it connects to us as well, because we have the opportunity, like we talked about last week, to become a part of God's family, to enter into relationship, to receive the, the privileges and responsibilities of that life-giving love. Another way of, of capturing this idea is arguably the most famous Bible verse in the whole Bible. Anyone want to guess what it is? I'll give you a clue. Uh, Tim Tebow wore it underneath his eyes. It's John 3.16. Yes, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Our relationship with God is the new life. It's a new opportunity. It's a new journey. Many folks, myself included, were on one pathway. Their life was moving in a direction and relationship with God and the people that God put in their lives shifted their trajectory. And we're in a new journey, heading in a new direction. I know that was certainly the case for me and probably is the case for many of us in this room. But this new life, this new journey begins now and continues forever into eternity. We describe this journey as Methodists through the three forms of grace. PJs is the way I like to say to remember it. Provenient grace, justifying grace, and sanctifying grace. Just a quick, quick uh, rerun uh, in, in case you forgot. This is really important for all of us Methodists here. We emphasize that God is chasing after us. We call this provenient grace, and it's pretty obvious in the scripture today that before you knew God, before God uh, had the opportunity to, or before you knew God and you had the opportunity to say yes for God, God was moving towards you. Provenient grace is often summarized as the love your parents gave you when they changed your diapers. You were probably crying, you were probably trying to roll away, but they still loved you enough to care for you in that way. Justifying grace is the moment when we say yes to God. When we enter into that life-giving relationship, we are justified, made right. Think of the margins in a Microsoft Word document. We are made right in relationship with God. And then sanctifying grace is the grace for the journey. It's the grace we celebrate at the communion table every week. May we be nourished to walk the life of faith that God has called us to. That's the ongoing process. And we believe as people of faith that we will be a little bit more like God next year than we are this year. This is the expectation that God is continually sanctifying us, continually changing us, working on us, chipping away at the parts of ourselves that are hurting and broken and rotten and helping us receive the fullness of that new life. The sacrifice of Christ leads us on a new journey. The sacrifice of Christ leads us on a new journey. I don't think Harry becomes the person that he becomes throughout 
that whole movie series and whole book series without the sacrifice Ron makes in that game. Without that, they don't get to the next room. Without that, they might not have stopped Professor Quirrell from getting the Sorcerer's Stone and giving it to Voldemort. But you know, there are two things that really stick out to me here. Is that one, Ron believes in Harry in a moment when Harry doesn't believe in himself. That's really powerful. Harry is wondering, can I do this? Am I strong enough to do this? And his friend says, it has to be you. You're the only one who can do this. And I believe in you. I think those are the words that God speaks into our lives through provenient grace. I choose you, I believe in you, and I'm willing to lay myself down for you to open up a new future, not just for you, but for all of us. And then the other thing that really stands out to me is that Ron did this, made this sacrifice without knowing the outcome. Harry hadn't saved the day yet. <laughs> but before they knew what was even on the other side of that room, Ron allowed himself to be sacrificed for the greater good. That is, a, that is an embodiment of this agape love that believes in you, that risks greatly, that lays itself down without knowing what the outcome will be. Agape love sounds great to receive, doesn't it? Oh, I wish I could just receive agape love from all around. But then when we flip that upside down, agape love sounds hard to give. You mean I have to love with no strings attached? You mean I, I have to love and give and, and maybe it won't work out the way I hoped it would? Maybe it'll blow up and be thrown back in my face? It seems risky. It seems dangerous to love in this agape way. But God gives us something. God gives us something that enables us to do it. It's the agape love of Christ himself opening us up to know that you don't have to be however you fill in the blank, good enough, strong enough, smart enough, pretty enough, all the different ways we try to be enough so that we can be loved. And for many of us, myself included, one of the lies that is most tempting to believe is that if people really knew me, they wouldn't love me. That is a lie. And we know that agape love is a call to a truth that is far greater than that lie can ever be. We are called to share this agape love. And the only way we can do it is by receiving continually the agape love that God gives us so that we know what it feels like to be loved solely for who you are as a child of God, a person of dignity and worth. May we share that agape love that God has given to us and that God calls us to share. It looks different and it probably won't take place on a chessboard. <laughs> but if we are paying attention and tuned in to the Holy Spirit as represented by these flames flickering right in front of me, then I think God will give us opportunities to share agape love. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful for your love. Your love that is risky. Your love that takes chances on us. Your love without strings attached that expects nothing in return. We thank you for the way your love opens up a journey. 
a journey that leads us forward and into a new future we have because of your love. We ask all of this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now's our time in worship where we have the opportunity to connect and to reflect together. And we do that either through our Holy Listening Stones or through our discussion question. Now, the Holy Listening Stones can be found on your table if you're seated at a table, or we have them up on the screen. And they're just a tool to help you to have a conversation about how you're feeling, any thoughts or insights that you might want to share with one another. And we invite you to use those tool, uh, stones as that tool. For example, Let's see, I might, earlier this week, if you'd asked me, I probably would have gone with that water drop at the top, because I was in Oklahoma City and it was 112 degrees, but I'm going to go with the smiley face now, because all my flights worked and I got home to my family, so I'm pretty happy today. So pick a, pick a stone that uh, represents how you're doing today, or we invite you to use our discussion question, which is, how have you experienced grace leading into a new future? You'll have three minutes to share your thoughts. we continue in worship through the giving of our tithes and offerings. If you're a guest with us today, I want to tell you a little bit about our theology of giving here at Spring of Life. We believe that God is generous and we give not out, a sen not out of a sense of obligation or guilt, but out of a sense of joy, responding 
to the ways that God has given to us. That's part of the reason why our communion and offertory responses are always later in our service of worship. Because today, we're responding to God's agape love. And we give out of a sense of that joy, out of that love as well. There are three ways you can give and support the mission of Spring of Life, sharing the living water of Jesus Christ. You can give online, you can give via text, or you can give at the offertory baskets at the back of the worship space. Uh, They're there, they're also on your tables. Thank you for your support. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the ways your agape love reaches out to us and provides a new pathway. We ask that you would use our church to do the same, that we would connect with people and connect with our community in a way that brings new life and a new future. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we come to the table, a place where we most clearly see the agape love of God. Jesus loves his disciples all throughout the time they are together. Even when, in the Gospel of Mark especially, when his disciples totally miss the point, when they don't get it, when they do the exact opposite of what Jesus has been trying to do and teach them for three years. And yet, by the way, the Gospel of Mark gives me hope for myself and for many, <laughs> and for many other people uh, that Jesus hangs with us. That even when we stray, even when we falter, that they're still there. And Jesus brings us into the table with him, explaining and making tangible his agape love. I'm going to give myself for you, and I want you to do this as a sign of my love. To remember me and remember how much you're loved by sharing in this holy meal. And so this morning, we share in this holy meal because it reminds us of just how much we are loved by God. And it reminds us, here we go, I'm going to turn it around on you again. It reminds us of the call God places on us to share love with no strings attached, free gift, offered humbly, without expectation of anything in return. So let us pray over our holy meal. Lord Jesus, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine, tangible tokens of your love. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we may be for the world a tangible expression of your love, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again and we feast at his heavenly banquet. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This time, I invite the communion servers to come forward and share in the hand sanitizer. And as they do that, I want to remind us of what I talked about earlier. This cycle of our salvation, provenient grace, coming forward with your hands together, ready to receive what God is offering you, justifying grace. The moment when you respond to God's grace by dipping your bread in the cup and then sanctifying grace, the bread we take for the journey. And this journey is commemorated by the love Jesus shared with his disciples, taking bread, breaking it, giving it to them, offering it to them freely as a gift without expectation of anything in return. Doing the same with the cup, giving thanks to God and sharing it freely without any expectation of anything in 
return. So we prepare the table to give freely in the way that God gave to us. So friends, come. The table is prepared. I invite you to come down the center aisle. So if you're seated on the side, please walk to the back. Uh, and if you would like to receive communion in your seat, you can do so by simply raising your hand. At the end, the communion servers will walk around and you can be served that way. If you'd like a gluten-free packet, uh, they, are, they have these available as well. Just mention that to your server. We have gluten-free elements for you. Friends, come. The table is prepared. Stop working, 
You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. We make miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, our God, that is who you are. It's been a joy to worship with you this morning as you leave from this place. Remember that God extends agape love to you. Risk-taking love with no strings attached. And may we, because we have received that love, have the strength to go and share it. And love with no strings attached. Go in love, go in joy, go in peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.